All right. Good morning, everyone. Um, Stephen Hurd with EXP Realty. Hope everyone is having an incredible day. Man, I'm excited to cover this topic. Um, today, we're going to be talking about listing mastery and all of the systems you need to create a solid listing business, to qualify your offers, to present them to the clients, to I the software you use. On mine. Um, I don't have sound on mine. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for letting us know, Michelle. I appreciate that. Uh, go ahead and raise your hand if you guys can hear me. Can somebody raise their hand? Let me know if you guys can hear me. Okay, cool. So I'm going to go ahead and mute everyone. Give me one second. Beautiful. Okay, cool. So uh, if you can't hear me, it's likely an issue with your, um, with your audio. So um, what I would recommend is just trying to check out your um, microphone button on the bottom left of your screen. So um, we have 98 people registered to be with us today. I'm so excited about this. Um, when I posted it, I tagged my mom because uh, I didn't think anyone was gonna come other than her. So now I'm excited to see I've got all these beautiful faces on the call. Um, what's up, Scott Hack in Louisville, Kentucky, man, awesome. Um, Steve Roman in Los Angeles. How you doing, Steve? Um, lots of good people on the call. So first thing I want you to do, I want you to comment below where you're at in the country. I'd love to know just where all these awesome people are at. So just the city and state, where are you at in the country? Um, and I'll wait for some of those comments to come through. So we've got Long Beach, Louisville, St. Louis, Maui. Oh, Daniel Root in the house. Okay. Take me with you to Maui, my friend. Laguna Niguel, California, Minneapolis. Samira said I'm at the Louis Vuitton. Honey, stop it. No, go get out of there. Um, someone said your house. Oh, that's my wife. Okay, cool. Um, Seal Beach. Cool. So lots of variety of places, lots of people coming in. Um, so that's great to hear. Now, what I want you to do before we get into it, because here, here's what we're going to cover today. Here's what I'm so excited about. Um, today, we're going to basically cover from start to finish what the listing process is. So how I get a listing ready to put it on the market, the pre-listing activities, all of that stuff, because I actually do 99% of the work before the house hits the market. Once the house is on the market, 99% of my job is done. So I'm going to walk you through how we do that. The second thing I'm going to talk to you about how to do is the software that I use to manage the listing. So I will show you guys what that looks like and how we manage the listing and the software we use and all that fun stuff. Then we're going to do a deep dive into our offer qualifying process. You guys, this is the single most important thing that we can really, that I can really share with you guys today is the offer process. So I have a form that all the buyer's agents fill out. I have a form that we send to the lenders. We have this whole qualification process that is automated. We get, you know, all of it happens in such a great way that I think you guys are really going to appreciate it and really going to like it. Um, so, yeah, so we're going to dive into that. And then we're just going to go into, you know, a few other things uh, that I think will be relevant to you guys and answer any questions you have. At the end of this, because I know what a lot of people are thinking, you know, number one, is there a recording? Number two, are you going to send any of the links? What does that look like? Yes, you're going to get a recording. You're going to get all the links to my software and everything that I'm using. Um, and all of that is coming to you after this. That'll probably come out within 24 hours of us doing this. So you guys, you know, make sure to keep an eye out for your spam in the next 24 hours, just in case you don't get it. Okay. So with that being said, I want you to do one last thing. Go ahead and comment below. Is there one question you have? Is there one topic you really want me to cover? So that way I can be diving into information that's relevant for you guys. Um, you know, how do you handle multiple offers? How do you qualify the lender? If there's any specific questions you guys have, I'm not going to cover them unless they're, um, unless they're put in right now. So that way I know I'm talking about what you guys really want to hear. Um, so as those questions roll in, uh, I'm just going to do one last sound check. Uh, raise your hand. Can everybody hear me right now? Are we good on the sound? Beautiful. Okay, cool. Um, awesome. 
So as we dive into it, I'm going to share my screen with you guys. Perfect. Give me a thumbs up if you can see my beautiful wife, Samira. Awesome. I'm getting a lot of thumbs up, but they all seem to be coming from the men. What's what's the problem here? Oh, OK, cool. Awesome. So everyone can see my wife. Cool. So um, with that being said, you guys, a little bit about myself. I've been a realtor in Orange County for ten, uh, for 13 years. I got into business with my family. My family's been doing it for 40 years in the business. Most of them are out of the business and retired by now. But that's kind of was my in into the real estate business. So I've been doing this for 13 years. I got in straight out of high school. And I love this business because of the financial benefits it gives people. I've seen a lot of my family members, a lot of my friends, a lot of my clients become millionaires in real estate. And that's what inspires me to really help keep moving forward every day. Um, my wife and I are business partners. We handle our listings together. She is great with the design. As you guys can see, if I would have designed this presentation for you, it would have been done with crayon on the back of a napkin. So you guys can thank her for how, um, for how coordinated our marketing is. She handles a lot of that stuff and we run the listings together. So um, Samira, if at any point you wanna speak up um, and you know, add to a point, just go ahead and interrupt me and, and we'll kind of get your insight too, okay? Sounds good. Awesome, thank you, sweetie. Cool, so let's roll into it. So. What's the first thing we're going to talk about? Um, I'm actually just going to kind of start to you guys from the start about the listing appointment. And I'm just going to give you a few quick tips on this point, right? Because a lot of you have your listing process. A lot of you know what to do, but let me just help you understand how I sell people and how I get them to basically pre-agree to working with me before I even meet them at their house. Okay. If you guys think that would be valuable to hear how you could have sellers basically pre-agree to work with you. So let's dive into that. So here's my philosophy on selling. My philosophy on selling is this, is that I'm not selling real estate. I'm not selling my services. I'm not selling commission. I'm selling aspirin. What do I mean by that? Well, what do you do when you have knee pain or joint pain or some kind of pain in your physical body you reach for the aspirin, right? The aspirin bottle doesn't need to sell you anything. It doesn't need to tell you how great it is. It doesn't need to tell you about all the awards it won. It just needs to you to feel pain for it to give a solution to your pain. So that's how I sell. I find out what is causing people pain. What is causing them frustration? What has them scared about listing their home? What challenges do they have? I'll give you a quick example. We're working with a seller right now we're getting ready to list his $1.2 million house in Fullerton, California. And, you know, he's really concerned about how he's going to move his dogs from here to Tennessee, where he's relocating to. And so my job is not to sell him on real estate or marketing or talk about all these cool things we do. My job is to help him find a way to safely get his dogs from Fullerton to Tennessee. He's got four labs. I grew up with labs my whole life. So I want to, I want to make sure his dogs get there safely. Right. So that's part of what I do is I find solutions to people's problems. So how does this translate to the listing appointment? Well, I, I don't actually win it when I'm in front of the seller. I actually win it on the pre-qualification call. So here's some of the questions that I ask them. Uh, great. Can I meet you Saturday at 4 PM? Great. We booked the appointment with the, with the client, right? Perfect. Now, you know, Mr. Seller, one of my missions is to make this process as simple as and pain-free as possible. Um, I'm sure you can, you can already imagine a lot of stressful things happening with putting your home on the market and having strangers come in, especially during COVID. I'm curious, what are some of your particular concerns, frustrations, or fears about putting your home on the market right now? So what are your fears, concerns, frustrations? What are you worried about putting it on the market? You guys, my, I have a standard presentation and I used to you know, be black and white. I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do that and just cover the presentation. But now I've learned to just talk about what people want. So I need to find out what are their fears, concerns, and then my presentation becomes how do I solve that? How do I become, this is gonna sound so silly, 
but how do I become the aspirin for that problem or that pain, right? So if the client says to me, you know, we really need help staging our home or we need to do a lot of work before we put our home on the market and we're just worried about all the work that needs to be done. Boom, I'm not talking about the marketing. The, the marketing is gonna go in one ear and out the other. I'm talking about how my contractor can come in, send his workers over and we could have the home remodeled in, in 72 hours. That's how I'm gonna solve the person's problem. So the second question I'm gonna ask this person is what is most important to you in the realtor who guides you in this process? What's most important to you to the realtor who guides you in this process? So I wanna know what's really important to these people. What are they looking for? I'll also ask them the question when I'm at the listing appointment, you know, hey, everybody has their own way of doing business. I'm just curious, how does somebody win with you? And when they answer that, they basically tell me how they want business to be done for them. We all have our unspoken expectations and rules. And so I want to know what they are so that I can adapt and make them comfortable because my selling is all about them. It's all about making them comfortable. So I'll ask them, how does somebody win with you? Follow up question. How does somebody lose with you? Right. I don't want to know what makes them happy. I also want to know what, you know, potentially pisses them off. Right. Um, Go, go back to where you were. <laughs> so let me let me get out for a second and figure out how I mute uh, mute everyone. Mute all. Okay, we're back to mute. Okay, cool. All right, cool. So moving forward in that. So my job is not to present to them a pretty little packet, although we we take the pretty little packet with us on the listing presentation. But my job is really to understand what what's bothering them. You know, my wife and I are in the process of selling our own home in uh, in Orange County, and it's not an easy process. I mean, it is it's stressful no matter which way you cut it, right? You got um, the other day I was in the shower and a buyer uh, buyer's agent just decided to walk, in, right? So so he got a little bit more than he bargained for that day, but you know, hey, that's that's what happens when you have your home on the market, right? Uh, Samir, I see you unmuted. What what would you add to that? <laughs> I was going to say a lot more than he bargained for. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. Okay. So with that being said, um, you know, that's kind of my listing appointment process is I really, I have two goals. It's, it's find out what this person needs or wants. Okay. Like what are their pains? What are their frustrations? What do they need or want? And then the second thing I do is I craft my presentation to meet that need or want, okay? Um, raise your hand if you've read the five love languages. Has anybody in here read the five love languages? Awesome, cool. So they basically tell you, hey, there's five particular ways that people feel love. Well, you know what? If, if I'm selling to somebody who feels love with in a certain way, I want to, to communicate in that way right? And it's the same thing with a listing appointment. I don't want to talk about the things that they don't value. I want to talk about what's important to them. So with that being said, um, let's move on to the next point. So that's kind of the listing appointment process. Qualify them. I go take a look at the property. I, I present, you know, the marketing, the comparable sales. I, and really, I spend most of the time talking about how I solve their problem. Once I solve their problem, the close is actually natural. Great, can you see how this would make selling your home easier and more convenient than, you know, than ever before? And, um, and they'll say, yes, perfect. All we need to do is initial here and we'll get started working for you today. That's honestly how most of the, of the listing appointments go. I used to worry about all the ninja selling tactics, and I practiced my scripts and you guys, I did all that stuff. That's, that's, there's nothing, there's, it's not like I didn't do any of that. That was for 10 years. But what I've learned is that if you just solve people's problems, the objections just go away. Um, cool. So if anybody has any questions on this point, or if any, I left anything unclear, throw it in the chat box. We'll definitely cover it and we'll move on to the next process. So um, we'll talk about our listing management software. 
So what would it look like if you had a detailed checklist for every single point of the transaction and everyone on your team had access to that checklist, including your administrative assistant, so that every point in the transaction that needed to happen, it just happened automatically, okay? I don't know about you guys, one listing to me, one listing or one buyer, if I don't have all my systems in place, it can get a little chaotic. Then you add in two listings, then you add in three. Right now we have five in escrow, uh, five or almost, or five or six in escrow. And so all of these details have to be managed and they're little details. It's not the big stuff, right? Everybody's good at texting people, following up, communicating. It's the little details that if you forget to review the counter offer correctly, if you forget to review something, you will mess up and it could cost you your reputation or it could cost your client their money. So how do you dive into that listing management software? So the first thing I'm going to bring up, and by the way, you guys are going to get an entire checklist uh, PDF of every single thing that I do with the seller, every text message, every email. I'm going to give all that to you guys. That's simple. So uh, let me walk you through the transaction folder. So um, we use a system called Asana. We use this system because it's easy to scale, it's relatively low cost, and it's collaborative. Whatever tool that you guys have, it's got to be collaborative or else what? Or else every time you need something, people are going to be reaching out to you and you're creating double work. We recently went through this on our team. Uh, my wife uh, said, hey, we should probably create an offers email. Um, you know, because, hey, well, all these offers are coming in. I keep having to ask you to forward them to me. Why don't we just have one offers email that forwards to everyone that needs to be part of it, right? So whatever tool you use, it's got to be collaborative. So here's a list of um, active clients and an escrow and all that fun stuff. But let's dive into the listing process so you guys see what you're going to get, uh, you know, the PDF that you guys are going to get and how you can you can use this. By the way, guys, you know, being on the Zoom call and teaching it, um, you know, it's it'd be good to know if there's anything that I'm missing or not covering. Just drop a, um, you know, just drop a comment in there just to make sure that everybody's tracking with me. OK. Um, so with that being said, so let's dive into the listing process. So I'd like to simplify everything because if it's not simple, it's not scalable. And if it's not scalable, it won't get done when you get busy. So how can we make it simple and scalable? So I've broken it down into four phases of the listing process. So every time we take on a new listing, we make a duplicate of this card in Asana, this uh, card or little template. And Asana gives us the opportunity to assign tasks to people. So I could assign this task to my assistant, Shalom. I can create a deadline for it. I can do all that stuff, right? So it's a collaborative system. So now let's dive into some of the pre-listing milestones. So you guys, remember when I said I do 99% of the work up front? So here's my philosophy. If I do all the work up front, I'm putting the seller in a better position to have a safe and secure sale. So what do I do? I pay for a home inspection in advance. So every listing that I put on the market, I have a home inspector come out that I pay for to inspect the property. I do a termite inspection on the property. If there's major wood damage that is structural, don't you think it would be better to know that before you're in escrow and you're trying to get the buyer to remove contingencies? Absolutely. So I do that termite inspection. The seller disclosures. Hey, do your sellers ever forget to tell you stuff? Hey, do you want to not find out in the middle of escrow that they buried someone in their backyard? Yeah, I think that'd be a detail to know before putting on the market, right? So all of those things, the disclosures, the inspections, um, the cleaners, we have the cleaners come out and clean the property. One of the value propositions that I have that is actually a really good, uh, sellers really value this, cost me about $825 per listing. And I pay for a packer to come and pack up any stuff that they need 
before uh, taking photos. Have you ever showed up to a seller's house and it's photo day just to find out that they are a total slob? Yes or no? I don't know about you guys, happens to me all the time. We get there with the photographers, they haven't cleaned anything. They haven't done anything that they that I told them they should do. So a day before the photos, if the photos are on Thursday, my gal's coming out Wednesday, she packs and she has a team of movers that moves all the stuff into boxes. So we get all those photos down. We get anything that needs to happen down before we go on, before we take the photos. So I'm do, doing all this before we go on the market, right? In addition to that, I pull the preliminary title report, make sure there's no title issues. I'm pulling the um, NHD report, make sure there's no major natural hazard disclosures. Everything that normally happens in escrow, I do before we ever hit the market. Here's something interesting here. Um, you know, um, so Charles Ryan asked, where do the boxes go before the photography happens? So we tell them, so there's two options they have. If they have somewhere else to store it and they can rent their own truck, we will, you know, the movers will move it onto the truck for them. That's part of the service we provide. But if they don't, if they have nowhere to move it and it's stressful for them, we just throw it in the garage. We're in Southern California. People don't park in their garage here. No buyers care if you have boxes in your garage. So we generally just have them store all their stuff in the garage. Or what most people do is they move it somewhere else. Uh, they'll just have like a storage unit or something like that. Okay. So all of that stuff's happening before we go on the market. You know, we send them an email prepping them for expectations before going live on the MLS. Um, we send them the welcome email with the next steps after we sign the listing agreement. We do all that kind of fun stuff. Um, so this is the first software that we use, the pre-listing uh, to, to cover all the listing milestones is Asana. So all that stuff happens before we put it on the market. And again, if there's any work that needs to be done, part of our pre-listing services, we have a contractor come out, they have to pay for it. That contractor will come out, paint, fix stuff up before we go on the market. Um, so that, that's a huge value for a lot of sellers. Think about it. Again, I want to be the aspirin. Silly as that sounds, it's so simple. I want to be the aspirin of you know, what needs to happen. So if their pain is, oh my gosh, you know, I need to pack, I need to get ready for photos, I need to um, do all this stuff. Hey, no, you don't. You need to do that with other realtors. If you want to do that yourself, hire them. If you'd like everything done for you and delivered to you on a golden platter or a silver platter, then you hire me. So that's the value proposition we have. Um, somebody asked a question, does the email come from the system? So actually, um, we have a different system that sends out the emails. Those, uh, my assistant sends those out manually. And, um, and we'll go over that system in a second, and you'll get a copy of that. Um, but we use our CRM. We have a, a CRM where we have templates in it. Um, so just to give you guys an example, my CRM probably costs me $350 a month. Um, so let's send an email to my dog, letting him know that his home came on the market. Okay. Uh, so let's, so this is how simple this is, right? We pull up the email, we go in here and we've got our seller milestones. So here's, here's just an example of one of them, right? So once their home goes on the market, my assistant sends them out this email. Hey, we're on the market. Here's the MLS link. Here's the Zillow link. We're going to use the showing time app for you to get, you know, see what upcoming showings you have. And then um, we just give them some other tips and stuff to prepare. Okay. So that's the system we use. And my assistant has access to this so she can go in and send that to them at the appropriate time. Um, so lots of stuff to cover in here. There's lots of details for you. I don't want to overwhelm you guys. So you'll have the checklist, but just to give you an example, this is what the, this is really the meat and potatoes. If every realtor had this, 
they would be so much more effective with their communication and transactions. So what I've done is I modeled the number one, um, the number one for volume real estate agent in EXP Realty. He's, he's in my upline at EXP Realty. So I have access to his private masterminds and he breaks everything down into 10 templates. So, or 10 milestones, whether it's buyers or sellers. So what do you do when you see someone who sells 712 homes a year? You just copy everything they do and it works like, works like magic. So milestone one, offer accepted. Now watch how simple this is. My assistant goes in here. She knows all the steps that happen once it's accepted. And then she sends the client a milestone email and a milestone text message. Okay. So I'll give you an example of one that sends out. When the client's offer is accepted, hi blank, uh, let's say, hi, Stephen, congrats on, on accepting an offer on your home. This is for a seller. I just wanted to let you know that we sent you an email that lays out the next steps and what to expect when we're in escrow. Also, if you haven't already, you should receive a phone call or an email from the escrow company within the next 24 hours to get you started on your documents. Can you let us know if you have any questions at this time? Super, super simple email, really, really, or super simple text message. Now, what, how do we create these text messages? How do we figure out these templates? Every time a client asks me a question more than once, I create a template, okay? Why would I want to spend the time typing it up again when I could just use the same template over and over again? Um, and so that, that just makes it simple. So those are the templates in there. You guys will have access to all these. But the, this is part of the third phase is all the milestones. So when their loan funds, when the loan docs are signed, the final walkthrough, the appraisal, you guys, when a home gets appraised here in California, a couple things have to happen. Smoke detectors got to be up in every room. Carbon monoxide detector has to be up on every level. Water heater has to be double braced unless it's a larger water heater, then it's got to be triple braced. So I want to prepare them for what they need to do before that happens, right? So I actually created a day of appraisal checklist. So I need to confirm that the house has all of the following and also some of the tasks that I need to do. So all I'm doing here is creating systems and things that make it simple for everyone. Um, so at this point, uh, as we're kind of toward the middle of the, of the webinar, does anybody have any questions about this point? The, the milestones, the process, stuff like that. If you do drop it in the comments right now, I'd love to, um, I'd love to address those and then, um, and drop the, yeah, drop those in there and let me know if anybody has any questions on that. So that's part of the listing process. Now, what do we do to communicate with the client, right? How do you make it so that the client, again, whatever tool you have has to be scalable, has to be simple, and it's got to be collaborative. If you have to update stuff or if you are the only one who has access, guess what? You're the one everyone's going to be coming to when they have questions. And what do we call that? We call that a bottleneck. That's bottleneck leadership. That's when everyone's got to come to you in order for something to happen. So how do we unbottleneck ourselves with the clients? Well, we use our next tool. Our next tool is our system called Folio. So Folio is the system we use to, uh, to track the timelines, the contingency periods, and all of that stuff in our transactions. So I'll pull up a recent transaction for you. We're going to view the timeline. So once a client's offer is accepted, we send them this timeline and it tracks all the key dates. So look at this. And this one just closed escrow. Um, so these aren't, you know, as visible as, as these ones are that are coming soon. But as you can see, the client knows when. So the clients have access to this. My TC has access to this. My assistant has access to this. Um, and, and yes, somebody asked, can I get the recording after? Yes, I'm going to send you a recording. I'm also going to send you all the links. I have a list of all the links for this as well. 
Okay, so three things that Folio does and why you absolutely need to implement it into your business right now um, is they give the service providers for the transaction. So when a new listing goes live or when a new home enters escrow, we basically, my assistant goes in here and updates all the service providers. Who's the termite inspector? Who is the mover? Who's the home inspector? It also gives them a list of resources, how to send, you know, do their cable and internet hookup, how to get insurance quotes, um, our utility list. Look, have you ever had a client ask you for utilities? Well, we just made a list of all the cities that we sell in. Laguna Niguel, Laguna Hills, Cota de Casa, Irvine, if you need a utility list. And then it gives them all the timelines to expect. So once we open escrow, it, it based on the contract, my assistant goes and puts in the key details of the contract. It auto populates what the contingency periods are. So when was the offer accepted? When is the earnest money due? When is the home inspection? When is the appraisal? When's the inspection uh, contingency? When is the termite? When is their loan approval contingency? What do they need to do for their final walkthrough? Signing loan documents, closing and possession. You guys, closing and possession, a lot of times um, can create conflict if you're not clear with that. So I've learned, hey, I need to outline it in writing. When is their possession to the hour? Because if they think they're getting possession at five and they don't get possession until six, that's a problem. Okay? So going over a lot of this stuff, Folio is the system I use. We email them and we text them. Um, and, and you guys will get access to all this. Okay? So that is a lot of the actual meat and potatoes of the actual listing process. Before we put the home on the market, we send them all this stuff. Now that we've gone through the listing management software, now we need to transition into what the heck do you do once the home is on the market? Okay, so you've, you've, you've got your listing management software. Cool, you've got your Asana, you've got your CRM, and you've got your folio. That's great, Stephen. But now how the heck, when I'm dealing with 20 offers on a property, how in God's name am I going to figure out how to qualify those and deal with those and not miss any details? You guys, if you don't have a software for that, you're probably putting your clients in jeopardy because there, there's over 100 important details in each offer that we get. So if I miss just one, I have 20 offers. You guys, that's 2,000 details I have to manage. Can you see how stressful that would be? So what do we do with that? So I'm going to give you an actual um, sneak peek into a listing I have on the market right now. Um, and I'll show you guys what I do just in the offer section. Um, and so I'll go through this with you, pulling this up right now, and we're good. Okay, so here's a home I have on the market in Westminster, California. A uh, million thirty-nine thousand, yada yada, right? So what do I do in the contingency or in the private remarks? I outline a three-step process for submitting an offer. Step one, fill out my form. Step two, email the offer in this order. Step three, group text Stephen and the co-listing agent, whatever co-listing agent I have. If there is one, if it's my wife, uh, sometimes I co-list about three or four homes a year with my mom. Um, or if it's another agent that just needed help with co-listing, we add that in there. Okay. So that's an actual listing I have on the market right now that I got three offers in the last 24 hours. So what happens? I have them fill out the one link I didn't pull up. I have them fill out the writing and offer on Herd Homes listing. So check this out, guys. They fill out this form before submitting an offer. And it basically says, hey guys, here's the three-step process for submitting an offer. Here is the recommended order of your offer. So when they send it in the PDF, I want it in this order. They don't have to do that, 
But guess what? 80% of them follow these instructions to the T. 80% follow the instructions to a T. Here's the recommended contingency timelines. Eight day inspection, no appraisal, 12 day loan contingency, 21 day close. What, uh, what property are you writing an offer on? Your first name, your cell phone, your email, your client's name, your offer price. What percent is their down payment? What type of financing? And I know you guys, I know I'm going through a lot on this, but I just want you to understand if I'm really gonna protect my client and I'm really gonna give them the best service possible and do my due diligence, it's my job to cross qualify these offers and make sure they're actual viable offers. These are the questions I need to be asking. How many days escrow did you put? Um, what earnest money deposit, what percentage? Did you attach the proof of funds? What's your lender's name? What's your lender's email? Is your buyer contingent upon the sale of their home? Is there an escalation clause? Is your client asking to pay for a home warranty? Is your offer contingent upon appraisal? So I'm just kind of going through this before they finish. Now you guys, is your client open to a rent back? Um, before submitting the offer, did you review the clear instructions given on how to submit the offer in the MLS private remarks section? That's my fail safe. Now, how many of you, I'm guessing there's 43 people on right now. I am guessing 99% of you believe this is overkill. And I'm guessing 99% of you um, think that an agent will not fill this out. Okay. Um, and, and, and I get it, right? It's a lot of information. It's extremely thorough. But here's what you have to understand. Every system must be simple collaborative and scalable, simple, collaborative, and scalable. So this system is simple. They can figure it out. They can do, they can do it themselves. They don't have any trouble with it. Now, is it collaborative? Yes. It's, it goes back as soon as they fill out that form, it auto populates all the information in a pretty little spreadsheet for me and sorts it by price. Okay. Sorts it by price. So my my assistant, once it goes into here, and once she submit, and once they submit the actual offer, she then goes into the client's Google folder, and she uploads all the documents into a shared folder with the seller. Right. That way, I can skip ten steps by having to forward every offer to the seller. I let them know I'm giving you a Google link. Every offer we get is getting uploaded into that Google link. We're gonna. We're going to be reviewing all these offers together. It's simple. It's collaborative. It's scalable. It'll work on a lot of listings. Okay. Um, some of you are, um, some of you are asking questions. It should take them one and a half minutes. They wrote the offer curious if it would make more sense to bring the instructions from the private remarks into the form. Uh, actually, um, Scott, the, the instructions are in the form as well, just a simplified version of them. Um, they are in the form as well. So yes, I think that's a great idea. Um, and then somebody asked, are escalation clause comments in your market? Common in your market? Yes. In our market, um, the average sales price right now for a single family home is about 950. We are, because Orange County has maintained a um, you know a really clean crime free area with a good job market. Um, a lot of people from Los Angeles. We are getting drones of people from Los Angeles. We are getting drones of people from San Francisco because they want clean, safe, beautiful area for less price. And so we're actually having all these people from like the Bay Area that just have ridiculous amounts of money. And they're putting in their offers, hey, I'll offer 10,000 above any offer you get. Um, so yes, they're pretty common. I would say maybe two or three out of 10 offers will put, put an escalation clause in there. Um, so great questions, guys. So with that being said, that's the process. They need to come here, fill out the offer form, fill out their stuff. It goes into this super clean spreadsheet that I can really manage everyone and I have the lender's information because I don't know about you guys, but I'm calling the lender. 
I'm talking to them and I'm making sure this buyer is solid on their debt to income ratios. I'm making sure they haven't had a late payment in the last 90 days. I'm making sure they've been on their job for a year or two. I'm doing all the things that normally cause deals to blow up. I don't trust the lenders anymore. The lenders, they've proven to me that I can't trust them. So what do I got to do to give a good experience to my seller? I got to take ownership of the process and systematize it. So once I get the top three offers, I actually email them my lender qualifying form. You guys, I, I assure you're probably thinking this is overkill. And I get it. It is overkill. But guess what? This is how you automate everything. Have your assistant do it so you can spend more time loving on your clients and counseling them. Your job is not to be the county clerk and input details all day. Your job is to give people confidence to buy and sell and to make it simple for them. So now I email the lender, the lender form. What percent is your borrower putting as a down payment? What's their monthly income? How much reserves do they have? What's their DTI? Has they, have they had any uh, missed payments? What's their credit score? What type of income do they have? So simple. I send them this form, my assistant does. Then guess what? All the answers auto-populate into my lender, uh, into the same spreadsheet. So I can see, and I'll give you an example. I had an offer on a home recently that was a really high offer, but the buyer's um, debt to income is 49%. Now, on most loans, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac has a hard stop, meaning they will not do a loan if it's past 50%. So in the original estimate, if anything changes from the original estimate of the lender, like the HOAs are a little higher, the taxes are a little higher, if anything changes, this deal's blowing up. That's not the kind of offer I want to accept. So just giving you guys an example of like the actual nitty gritty process. And a lot of, you know, uh, some people have asked before, do you take the calls from the agents, um, from all the agents calling on your listings? Uh, we put our home on the market and I had over 250 phone calls in, the, in, in a matter of two days, right? And, and my wife can tell you, uh, it probably drives her crazy, but I, I ignore uh, probably 95% of them and the people who are serious and text me and say, hey, I have a quick question or they leave a voicemail. Um, but if they call and they don't leave a voicemail, they're not serious. I'm not getting back to them. Um, so that that's kind of how I handle the calls on that. And then what, what I do with the agents is I'll kind of give them a range. I'll say, look, we've got offers in. This is what's important to my seller. This is when we're going to be sending the counter offers. And you know, this is kind of the range of where we're thinking things are going to land, but, you know, please submit. We'll probably send you a counter offer. So that's kind of how the conversations go. And in the multiple listing service, I put the offer due date. So a lot of times agents will ask, when is the offer? When are offers due? I put it right in the, the multiple listing service section. Okay. So that is some insight into the listing management software that you guys will have access to. And you guys can see all of that, right? So let's just summarize that process. A lot of information. I get it. Everyone I tell about this, they're like, it's overkill. I get it. I, I feel the same way, but it, it just helps with time management. It makes things simple, right? It helps me not miss details. Um, so they have to fill it. So I put it in the private remarks of the MLS. They fill out the form. My assistant inputs all the details so I don't have to touch anything. She puts all the offer and all the corresponding PDFs in a Google folder that is shared with the client. We, she sends the link to the lender, the lender qualifies them. Then I step in once I have the top three offers, top three price, top three debt to income, top three down payment, whatever it is, the ones that I look at on the spreadsheet that seem like they're the best candidates, I will then call the agents of those, I will have conversations, and I'm trying to find out, do their clients love the home and if, if they can live without it? If I get any hesitation from, from the agents that their clients don't love the home, it's not, a, it's not a client I want to be an escrow with. Especially right now when homes are selling so high, appraisals are coming back low and that buyer, you know, they need to be in love with the home and they need to be bought into the idea of buying a home right now. 
if they're going to stick with it. So <clears throat> with that being said, that's our listing management software. Um, now, text and email templates, we went through this. Um, we went through a lot of that. So you guys got the text and email templates throughout the transaction. That's part of the 10 milestones. So just to make, make that clear, if I'm working with a buyer, if I, I keep I keep pointing over here and my camera's over here. So if you guys keep wondering why my thumb goes out of the screen, that's why. Um, if I'm working with a seller or if I'm working with a buyer, there are 10 milestones to the transaction. Every milestone we approach, I send them an email and a text message. Milestone two of 10, milestone three of 10, et cetera. It keeps everybody on pace and it keeps everybody on track. Now, who wants to know the secret to getting referrals? Who wants to know why you might not be getting referrals even if you're an amazing person and your clients love you? Somebody asked, uh, Daniel Rude said, are you sending those text emails or is your TC does? The text and emails are templates in my uh, CRM and my assistant has access to that and she sends the text and email templates, okay? So who wants to know the secret to getting referrals? You guys, I give great customer service. I love my clients. I will fight for my clients. I will do whatever it takes. If, if the client is having a bad experience, I will, I will give away my commission entirely because I am so dedicated to them having a good commission. I would work for free rather than let down a client. Let me tell you something that will never get me referrals. And it took me three years to understand that. It took me three years to understand the difference between, you know, uh, between hard work and care and customer experience. Okay. So there is a big difference. If anybody's been to Orange County, California, there's a big difference between Disneyland and Knott's Berry Farm. Comment below if you've ever been to Knott's Berry Farm in, in Orange County, if you've ever been to Disneyland. So there are two theme parks. One of them commands a price of $100 to $150 a ticket. One of them is about $60 a ticket. And sometimes you go there, people are shooting at each other. Same area, same theme. They're both a theme park, but one of them gets people coming back constantly. So how do you get people coming back? I would challenge you to write this word down. Or I would challenge you to write this statement down. Customer service, write down customer service, cross it out, and write down customer experience. Customer experience, okay? Customer service is just the bare minimum. Customer, that, that's, the, that's the equivalent of the waiter filling up your water, getting your food on time, all that stuff. That does not make you rave about that waiter. Customer experience, is when they take time to remember your name, they make you feel special, they follow up on your food order, and they deliver it in a way that makes you happy, okay? Makes you feel good. So customer experience is the name of the game. So what do I do? How do we create wow? The mission of Herd Homes is to deliver wow at every level of the experience. So what is wow? That is simple. That just means that when when we're fulfilling our mission, it's when we do stuff for our clients that they're like, oh my gosh, that was incredible. How no realtor has ever done that before. I live for those wow moments. I live for that. So how do we deliver wow and get referrals? This listing that you saw in Westminster, that is a seller referral from a home that I sold in Lake Forest six months ago. She was a, um, she was the principal of a school. And one of the things that I do, which I'll share with you today, is I send them when their uh, home closes, I send them an edible arrangements. It's a basket of fruit. It's all pretty. It's got balloons that say congratulations. And she was so touched by that, that she told her friend who was the PE teacher, and I ended up getting a referral for a $1.1 million listing. Okay. Um, and I didn't have to compete against anyone and they didn't haggle on commission. Um, there was no discounts and they followed all the advice we said. How many of you would like to have that on your listings? 
I hope I, I'm sure it's all of you, right? So how do we deliver wow? So we create an experience. So basically we celebrate every milestone with the client. So here's how we do that. Um, and I'll pull up the right screen next time. So here's how we create wow. Promise you it's coming any second now. Okay, so we'll we'll just pull up the first one, which is send out cards. Okay. When their offer is accepted. So when their I'm sorry, not when their offer is accepted. When they first work with us as a buyer, so if they sign the buyer loyalty agreement or if they're a seller and they sign the listing agreement, I will send them a card, a thank you card with, with the send out card brownies. Now, how many of you guys are familiar with these? You've probably used them before. Almost everybody now um, uses send out cards or has heard of it. But let me ask you a question. Are you using it consistently? Are you using it consistently? So what I do is I just send them a card. You can type up, you can type up the text and they, they write it out as your, um, as your handwriting. Hey, dear Jan and Patty, thanks so much for allowing us to serve you in the sale of your home. We look forward to making it a great experience for you. Enjoy these brownies while we get to work finding the perfect buyer for your home. Okay, so we have five touches within the transaction, four or five touches where we do something that creates an experience. Clients always talk about when they're referring me, this is so silly. They tell people, yeah, he sends us brownies. Make sure he sends you the brownies, okay? That is a really, really powerful thing. So that's step one, once they sign the listing agreement. So what happens when they accept an offer? So once they accept an offer, I send them an edible arrangements. You guys, this is so simple. They have them in almost every zip code. Um, the one I send is only about $24. Uh, so this one's a little bit more expensive, but basically it looks just like this. It's a congrats box. It's chocolate covered fruit and a congrats balloon. It gets sent to their house. You can order it in the morning. It'll be at their house in the afternoon. And I put a message in there that says, congrats on accepting an offer. You're one step closer to selling your home. Okay. Clients love. Now here's, here's the point about experience. You guys, what do you think happens with this? You think, do you think the seller eats all of those themselves? Okay. If it was me, probably. Right. But, but not everybody's like me. So what happens? They have their friends over their friends, see it. And they're like, Oh my gosh, who sent you that? Or even better, their kids start to eat it. And their kids are now talking about the experience. And so they say things like, oh, my God, like, you have no idea. My kid, like, love the chocolate covered fruit you sent. Like, that was such a thoughtful thing, right? So that's the second thing we do in the transaction. What's the third thing we do? Once the contingencies are removed, we send out what's called BizBox. So check this out. Basically, let's go to pricing. BizBox, you submit your logo to them and your art. And they have a package. And for $45, you can send, let's see if I can open this up in a new tab to see an example. Um, let's just do Berkshire Hathaway. So basically, you can send them moving boxes with your branding on it. Now, I got this tip from one of my favorite realtors in Temecula, shout out to Joseph Onello. Um, and he basically, when I was moving to my house now, he sent me this kit and basically it's boxes with his branding on it. Well, guess what? For about almost two years, I had his boxes in my thing. And I was always thinking Joseph Onello, Temecula, Joseph Onello, Temecula. So that's, so this $45 kit includes the five boxes that are, that are branded with your photo and your, um, your name and number. It gives them a dish pack, a black marker, rolls of tape, a clam dispenser, and bubble wrap. So I call it Stephen's moving concierge moving kit. And so I'll, I'll call them and I'll say, hey, did you receive Stephen's concierge moving kit? And they'll be like, oh my gosh, you have no idea. Like we were so stressed out and we didn't have enough boxes and it helped me. Some people, some people care, 
Some people are just like, oh yeah, that, thanks. That was very thoughtful. And then some people are just like blown through the roof. They're just like, wow, that was so kind of you. Um, so that's, that's the four things that I'll do throughout the transaction. And that happens once we remove contingencies, right? Again, my assistant has access to all this. So I'm not doing any of this. I'm just listening to them, counseling them, guiding them, doing what a realtor should do. I'm not, I'm not a, uh, you know, a front desk administrative assistant, right? No problem with that job. But if you want me to manage details, stuff's good. The ball's going to get dropped. You need me out there in front of clients. So that's what happens after we remove contingencies. And then for the closing gift, my goal is really just to take them out to dinner. Um, I find that I really like, I'd love to take you guys to a nice restaurant to celebrate, get you guys some wine, have some fun, pop some champagne and really make that experience there. So that's kind of the process that I'll use to really deliver. Wow. To really go above and beyond. And, you know, one thing that I'm always looking for, and I hope you guys pay attention to this because this is really what I think is going to make or break my business is I'm always looking for those wow moments, right? I'm always asking myself, how can I, how can I deliver more wow today? And you guys, I had a client who had, who got exposed to COVID recently. And so I was thinking to myself, how can I deliver? Wow. What can I do here? That's not real estate related. That shows this person that, Hey, I, I want to love you the way that God loves me. I want to be a light and, and just help you the best way I can. So what did I do? My wife and I went to, uh, to Walmart. We got a bunch of groceries for her because she was sick. We got um, tea. We got honey. We got tissues. We got water bottles. We got, you know, whatever she needed. We went and delivered it to her front door and she was having trouble finding a COVID test. How many of you guys have heard about challenges finding a COVID test recently? Think, thankfully, my wife is like a guru when it comes to researching things. So she found this, uh, she, she already had a COVID test that was delivered to us from a thing she found and we delivered it to the client and the client was so thankful. She texted me and she's like, wow, that was so above and beyond. I can, I can't believe you did that. Right. You guys, those are the conversations I want to be having with clients, not, Hey, can you do it for 1%? Because Billy Joe at, at Tarbell said they would. No, I want to be having conversations that are like, wow, I'm so grateful. Thank you for your help, Stephen. That's how I know I'm being successful. That's how I measure success. Um, so that's a little bit about delivering wow. Now, again, you guys are going to get items for the links discussed. Uh, so, you, so within 24 hours, you guys will get a full list of all these links that we discussed. You guys, I tried to jam pack as much value as possible into this. I tried to just give you guys everything I had. I know we went over a lot. Um, comment below. Um, I'd love to hear some feedback from you on a scale of one to 10. One, hey, Stephen, nothing in this was helpful. 10, hey, I got a lot of value out of this. On a scale of one to 10, would you guys just give me some feedback now in the comments? Let me know where I stand because I would love to just really understand if this helped you guys. Um, now, obviously, you, a lot of you guys know I'm with EXP Realty, um, and so I was with Keller Williams for 10 years. Absolutely love the company. Best friends with all of the people there. I really recently moved to EXP Realty, um, and the reason I moved there is because I have access now to people who close 712 sales a year. I have access to all these mega producers through my upline here at EXP. That's how it works. Basically, whoever you sign up under, they are financially incentivized every time you close. So they have an incentive in your business. So I won't go into any more detail than that. But if anybody has ever been interested in EXP or you're considering joining, um, understand that with our group, you get access to every single system we have. We help you with your social media. We help you with all your templates. I'll give you my listing presentation. You can see every single thing I do. Right now, I have about six, uh, five and a half million in escrow volume. Um, so I can teach you how I get all my agent referrals, how I do all that stuff. When you're, when you're with my team, you pay no split. You just pay the company split. And I give you every single thing I have the same way I'm getting it from the people here at EXP. So hopefully, you guys and gals, 
hopefully this was helpful to you. I see 22 comments in the chat. Um, people said 10 out of 10. Uh, somebody said, wow, you're so good looking. No, I'm just, nobody really said that, but that would have been nice. Uh, wow, incredible, great. Okay, cool, so good feedback. Um, one guy said, who are you again? Just kidding. Um, ooh, solid class. Uh, buen trabajo, amigo. Okay, good stuff. I got my, I got Daniel Rude, who's in my Spanish class with me. So, guys and gals, hopefully this is helpful for you. If I would have known this information 10 years ago, I could, I could easily say that I would have tripled my production that I'm at now if I would have had these systems a few years ago. So I hope some of this is helpful to you guys. Um, I'd love if one or two of you would unmute or anybody that wants to uh, unmute. And you know, if anybody wants to just talk about any questions they have, anything that we need to uh, do a further deep dive in. Um, so, so there's a request out there to unmute. If anybody's interested in chatting a little bit more or wants to add to this, please, you know, now would be a good time. Are you with the fast forward movement? I am, yep. Cool, I, I'm sorry. with them too. But I haven't somewhere. had a chance to go <laughs> and see the, um, the masterminds yet because I've been still up, you know, doing all okay. the stuff cool. to get on, on board. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So every in case anybody doesn't know the fast forward movement. So at EXP, there's seven people above you that make money off the company commission. Uh, and so basically there's I have seven people on my upline that are selling more than 100 to 700 homes a year that I could call at any time and ask for help and all that um, because they make money when I make money. So um, so we're both part of that same group. Every the people on the top are like Kyle Whistle, Jay Kinder, um, Daniel Beer, all those fun people. So thanks for mentioning that, Helen. What else? Who has some other fun topics that, uh, or any any other questions on this that they'd like to share? I have one other question. Um, so listings for me have always been very emotional. I feel like I'm very connected to the seller. And I feel like I am right, the seller yeah. when the house is on the market. And, you know, a lot of times well, you can't even, I mean, you're getting offers <laughs> left and right, but every right once there. in a while there's an off week or something happens in the market and then you don't get what you were expecting. And yeah. that's always kind of tough. So how do you, how do you deal with mm -hmm. that kind of connection? How do you make cool, it cool. a little yeah. less connective? No. You know, um, I don't even know if I would make it less connected. I mean, my my thought on it is, cool. you know, people really value the connection. Okay. And so I, yeah. I know a lot of realtors that wow. they might That's not so be better. anywhere Contest near these systems we're talking about, about like the but people feel like they're friends with them. And so now. they'll refer them and they'll stay, yeah. you know, yeah. they'll do better in business in, in this business because this business is, is yeah. emotional. So actually, if that's your superpower, I would try to find ways to delegate all the other stuff. So, you know, maybe not being so, like not being up and down emotionally, but for sure, I would spend more time with them. Like, I think your end goal is like, how can I get lunch with them more often? How can I go to dinner with them more often? How can I spend more time with them? I think that's better than, than being not connected. I'd love to be a little bit more connected to my clients. Um, that's in the task bar. And then you said you were looking yeah, for yeah. ideas um, to wow people. So um, I, would have asked you to log in. I know it's tough if with COVID, but have you ever done account, kind of like a seller going away party? Yeah, that's a great question. My wife has been um, telling yeah, me for years are, no, seller going know. away party. Um, I also I, I, I decided to implement that last year and nobody took me up on it because of COVID. Okay. Um, but um, one thing we have implemented at our open houses is a taco cart. So we pay for a guy to come and, and cook, you know, authentic tacos. And um, basically, the, the whole dynamic changes at the open house. Now, do you costs pay? about $400. And the, basically, the people just hang out. They have fun. 
They yeah, talk a little bit more. Help, help they're me, they're more willing to work with you. Uh, I had a client the other day that said, can I get a list of your upcoming exactly open houses? Like um, I'd really love to start attending them. Word and stuff. So you can <laughs> if you'd like. Cool. Yeah, I mean, how, how often does somebody say, can I get a list of your open houses? Um, you know what I'm saying? Your subscription? Yeah. Yes. Totally. So, they love tacos. Yep, exactly, right? Uh, uh, we love tacos. Um, one thing that we did do recently and is we did a family exactly photo day event. Because it's all um, like me, going through like yes. two Somebody's of them talking in the background. It takes a while for that to update and then stay out. Of yeah, I know. I think it was uh, Helen. You had a question, that, and I think there's that. someone talking in your background, which is oh, is, sorry. That's okay. This is there. this is part of the virtual world we're in, so we'll we'll mute for a second while I address this. So. Um, the, we did a family photo day event recently, which was a big hit with our past clients. Um, and so we, um, we basically, and this is all about delivering. Wow. We hired a photographer, we a family photographer. We rented out a local park, like a little area at a local park. We got a photography permit. We invited them all. And we had about 15 families come and do professional photos um, the whole thing costs about costed about eight hundred dollars, and we got uh, three referrals from it. Um, and again, our average commission is twenty one thousand dollars. So you know, to me, I would I would spend any amount to get fifteen of my past clients somewhere, right? I'm not I'm not really concerned about that. Um, and I've learned this year. I used to be very very not wanting to spend a ton of money on events and stuff, and I've really learned to reprioritize my budget. Um, and, you know, really devote it to more client related things. So, um, hopefully that's helpful on the delivering wow portion. Daniel Rude, um, had a comment. He said, uh, you know, Hey, lots of stuff in here. Um, what do you, what, what would you recommend we start first? Where would you recommend we start first? Um, so, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of, you know, starting little by little. I don't think I've never gotten... I don't know about you guys, but I've never actually accomplished anything trying to do everything. It just doesn't work for me. I don't know why. Maybe some people can do it, but I find with small steps that are achievable, I actually do a better job of implementing and those small steps grow into something bigger. So for me, a small step on this um, in, in the listing systems is I would look at um, using Folio. I would look into using Folio for your client timeline. I think that's one thing that keeps everybody on track. Um, I think that clients appreciate it. I think your, your team will appreciate it. And Folio is the system that gives everybody the timelines. And then when you add a calendar date on there, it automatically adds to everyone's calendar. So it's just a very collaborative tool. I think that's one way to add your presentation to make it more modern and to make your transaction more of an experience for the clients. Um, so hopefully that was helpful, Daniel. Um, Mila asked, do you ask for referrals? Um, do you ask for referrals? You know, I do, um, and, and I'll, I do it throughout the transaction. So what, at the beginning of the meeting, the first listing meeting, I'll say something, something to the extent after they've signed with me, I'll say, you know, Mr. Seller, I have, you know, two goals in this process. Goal number one is to sell your house for the highest possible amount in the least amount of time and to make it so simple that you didn't even realize your house was listed. The second goal is that I do such a good job that you would become a raving fan for referring me to your family and friends and you would have no hesitation urging your friends to introduce them to me so that I can help them with their real estate services. So, you know, Dan, if I really knock this out of the park, you know, and if I really do a good job for you, would you feel comfortable referring your family and friends to me? Well, that Randy, you know, so, so the second thing I'll do is in the contingency, uh, once the buyer removes contingencies, right, the seller starts to feel a little bit more secure. So I will, at that point, I'll say, awesome, you know, now that we're past the contingency period, I think you can see that my service is really, you know, good for you guys and would be good for other people. 
I'm curious, have you heard of anyone talk about possibly moving? Do you have any friends that might be worth introducing me to that I could help? And then again, once we close escrow, and then again, I'll try to at dinner with them, you know, dinners and lunches are a big thing. And I'll, you know, at dinner, I'll say, hey, you know, thank you guys for coming with me tonight. You know, if you guys hear of anyone, you know, please keep me on the top of your list, would love to help them out. So there's a few direct asks and there's a few passive asks. Um, and then, you know, to be, to be totally honest with you, my success with referrals has less to do with asking for the referrals and it has more to do with continuously adding value after the transaction, after the transaction. My job, the, the, ask, the, con, the um, escrow part, anybody can do that right? That's, that's what everybody can do. But the actual after part, inviting them to events, sending them mailers, sending them birthday cards, being their friend is what really, um, is what really gets me the referrals. So I hope that helps. Last question we're going to take, do you send an online survey after the transaction closes? Um, I don't actually, that's a good idea. I haven't done that recently. Uh, I, I don't know if I've ever done that. Um, so that's definitely something to put on the list and implement. Great idea, Helen. And I do have my assistant Shalom send review uh, review request. Um, so after the transaction, she sends them an email. Thanks for letting us serve you. Here's the link to our Zillow and Yelp account. You know, would you mind leaving us a five star review? We would really appreciate it. Um, cool. Okay. I've literally given you guys probably so much information. Half of you are probably asleep right now behind your cameras. So I get that. No worries at all. Um, with that being said, thank you guys so much. I'm honored that you spent this time with me. I am grateful. I can't wait to send you guys the recording. I can't wait to stay in touch with all of you. And uh, again, if anybody is interested in joining uh, our movement over here at eXp Realty and you would just love to have access to the top producers in the country and give all the tools and support with your social media and your listing and all that stuff. If that sounds appealing to anyone, please reach out. We'd love to hear from you guys. Have a blessed day and I'll see everybody soon. Bye guys.